and welcome to our pastors, our teachers. Welcome everybody. If we can all stand, if you can stand, we're going to go ahead and pray the service in, all right? But before we pray in, let's get these noisy, annoying little things out of our pockets, out of our purses, and let's put them on silent. Let's put them on silent. That's what, you look so much brighter. What's going on? <laughs> like the radiance of Moses, right? Yeah. Okay, guys, uh, let's put these things on silent. We're in service. And three things I love to tell you guys. I want to get to be here every Sunday and Tuesday. Number one, you are loved. Number two, you are appreciated. And number three, you are what? Thank you. Hey, welcome, everybody. You. And welcome, everybody, watching this from home. Send in your prayers. You're watching us from home. I will pray for you. I promise you I will. If not, my wife will hit me in the head if I don't. If I forget. Okay? All right. Father God, I praise you and I thank you and I love you, Lord God. Thank you for this amazing congregation. Thank you for these amazing people right now, Father God, that came into church to worship you, to thank you, to remember what you did for them, Father God. Thank you. We love you. And we ask you in the name of Jesus, Father God. Open up our understanding. Open up our minds to receive the word. In the name of Jesus, we pray for an awesome service tonight. That we all go home, Father God. Just letting the Holy Spirit take over our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, before you know, earlier I said, raise your hand if you are a Church on the Street alumni. Uh, but before we bring up our senior pastor to preach tonight, I'd like to have everyone that has gone through the Church on the Street program, or has graduated, or if you've been affected by what Pastor Wall does, to be, please stand up. Praise God! Our senior pastor is going to preach today. Standing. Our senior pastor is going to preach today. You know, he pre he's been preaching to us for many, many years. So but he preaches at church on the street on Sundays. You know, maybe it's once or twice a month. And he preaches 30 minutes or 40 minutes. But most of his preaching is done out there in the streets. And in the outreaches, you know, and, and what he does in our lives. And his preaching, whether it be outside or in here, has affected every single one of his lives. So you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to stand up and I'm going to listen, Pastor Wall. Thank you guys. Thank you. 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 Two services, but they get all mixed up, and they, they lost their chaplain. And they, they, they got to have them on the, the list before they can come. Anyway, we've got a good service for us. We're going to kind of pattern that tonight after you know, a little bit of that. But you know, also, I just, I know, God is, is really interesting. I don't know a better way to say it. You know, I just look at the, the bulletin. Choose you today whom you will serve. Amen? Amen. Amen. Anybody heard of Bob, Bob Dylan? Yep. Yeah. Gotta serve someone. Anybody heard of Bob Dylan? Gotta serve Did he sing a song? Gotta serve Yeah. It was 35 good. Yeah. Anybody have an idea what it was? Gotta serve somebody. What is it? Gotta serve somebody. Oh, that's right. Very quickly. You got up and sang. In fact, I. Pulled up on the website. Yeah, but 
you don't get a sense of money. It's probably about 2012, 2013, and so forth. He claimed to be a Christian. And the battle's on. Now, I heard he'd been in, he'd been out, so I don't know where he's at. But he sang this song. You got to serve somebody. And in that song, he says, either you got to serve the devil or you got to serve God. You can't serve anybody else. He said, well, yeah. Yeah. I'll, you, you will say, I'm all right with you. You go right ahead. Are you serving God? Well, no. Then you're serving the devil. There ain't no middle ground. How about that? That was good. Robert, come on. We bring you a chair or something. Yeah. You chair your guitar. <laughs> He's been kicking around with us for, oh my man, I don't know how long. He and I have been doing the jail service together, and it's really, really deep. Now, yeah, you can give another mic if you want, or you can do this one, or that, whatever. And it's, you know, when we can get out of the way, and let God be God, and to me, my heart is like J.C. was saying, is to get out of the streets. By the way, Joe, Joe's the one that makes up the bulletin. And I don't think he knew that or not, but when he put in the bulletin, that's kind of what we're talking about tonight. Got to serve somebody. <laughs> he put it in the you know, you know, I don't think we need to appreciate Joe. He's got so many different things. He's the one that got this guy figured out how to do. And, you know, we have struggles and problems with everything we do. But that old rascal, whatever needs to be done, he might argue with a little bit at first or whatever. But that man is a man who does. He gets things. And that's the way we all need to live. Whatever it is, you might not like it. Hey, do you like everything God's told you to do? Me neither. But I do. I don't, but I do. Okay, I might not like it, but I says, God, whatever you want me to do, if I know it, Jesus is all So, the Bob Hill says you got to serve somebody. It might be the devil or it might be the Lord. Who knows? But you have to serve somebody. And some, like I said before, some will say, I'm not going to serve anybody. You get tired of it, lying to yourself, kidding yourself. How many just want to get down to business and say, what's this thing really all about? Is it really all about what? Well, God's chosen us and called us. You've got a plan for us. And if you listen to him, he'll show you. And then you'll find out what it's really all about. And if you don't, you're going to be stuck on you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Stuck with you? Okay. Now, i got a couple things. Let me see where I'm going to go. You know, in uh, 3 Peter, or 2 Peter 3, 18, it says, To grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior of Jesus Christ, to Him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. Now, 17 says, you therefore shall love, since you know this beforehand, beware you shall also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away by the air of the wicked. Amen. Now, you got to serve somebody. What are you going to do? Now, I'm going to share this and we'll turn you loose. I've been trying to figure out how to do this. And how to share that. I got all kinds of, I love this. I got all kinds of things. And whatever, if I can find it. Okay. Yeah, you know, as we grow in the of knowledge, we're going to be happy with temptations. Amen? Okay, well, we got to serve somebody. Now, I love this, and I don't, but I do love it. And I've said in my heart, and I mean this, whatever you want me to do, Lord, if I know it, you will do it. Okay? 2 Corinthians 12, 7. At least they should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation. This is Paul. That was given to me as a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Now, I'm not saying I know anything, but I believe God's keeping me in check, keeping me in place. Amen? Amen. I believe He's going to do that to all of us. Now, and I've been here, I've been doing this for, oh, ah! Verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that he might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, 
The grace of God is all we need. You know what he says? Young lady, put on it. My grace is sufficient. <laughs> She's a good one. I love people. I like the God. People, you know what? She, I, I see her. She, I respect her. She is a doer. She ain't back down. And you don't hear her testimony. She's down in that old soup kitchen, man. She's got pictures that she did look kind of beautiful. I mean, pretty. I mean, no, she had a beautiful when she was younger. Then you can just see what this sin life has done for her. In a hospital, oh my God. But now you can see the radiance. It's in her. Amen? Amen. You know what? That's what he wants from us. And by the way, that's what he says. And he said, my grace is sufficient of me. It's the grace of God that brings salvation. It's the grace of God, the love of God, that evidently sent Jesus to the cross, right? Okay. He says, for my grace is sufficient of thee, my strength is made perfect in weakness. And Paul says, most gladly, therefore, will I glorify, rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, tell him, don't you? Amen. on this one. <laughs> therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, reproaches, necessities, persecution, and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am Amen. 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 The trying of our faith. The rich God of God makes us full of precious and silver and gold. Amen? Okay. Let me get this one last thing here. You know what I like? He puts in my heart what to do. How many will do what he puts in your heart to do? Amen? Now, this is an old sermon I preached a long time ago. Long, long time ago. But I just have to go through the computer. The whole thing is about us making a resolve. What does it mean to resolve? Sell it? Sell it. The whole thing is about us making a resolve to get to know God and who He is and do what He wants us to do. And when you seek Him, he gives you a passion to do what his will is. That passion consumes you. And, the, and you don't really want to do anything else because of the fire of the Holy Ghost that drives you. It burns in your bones. And your heart becomes fixed, determined, locked in, and controlled by the Word of God. Psalm 57 says, My heart is fixed, O Lord, my heart is fixed. Amen? Amen. Now, what's that scripture I just read a minute ago? My grace is sufficient unto thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly when I glorify infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, distresses, persecutions, destruction. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, I am strong. So what does he want us to do? Sell out the you know, Make the decision. Become resolved. Amen. Amen. I'm watching this old rascal here. Man, he's been battling for how many years? Woo, he's a good testimony. I'll sit down and... <laughs> and don't you get excited? I don't know. I'm going to stay there with everyone too. something like this and I thought okay you know, uh, you know, it, it's easy in the jails for me to do that it's easy for me to I mean I could probably stand uh, before a thousand uh, inmates and it wouldn't bother me but for whatever reason you know I have a struggle coming up here and, and uh, maybe sometimes we take for granted some of the things that people have gone through in their lives and, and we think their testimony is okay we hear testimony we hear testimony we don't realize some of the things that God has put people through to have those testimonies. And I know that the world is taking everything for granted. And even the church is following behind. And we have to be careful because we're precious in God's sight. And, uh, and it's hard for me to give my testimony here because we're, so many of us are, have the same testimony. And, you know, I'd like to go somewhere like the high school or the college and, and really open up to them. And they'd probably flip out about where God has brought us from. Amen. But a lot of us here, you know, like I said, it's, 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 it's a normal thing, and it shouldn't be, because the Holy Spirit is new. You know, he, I don't want to say God is 
But God does something in you. You know, we, we share today. And, and I, I want to stay focused on that because it's easier for me because, you know, I'm, I'm pretty nervous. And, you know, and, and it takes a lot to get me nervous. But whatever, God is good and I love Jesus. And I thank God that he's brought me from such a terrible place in my life. And, you know, I was talking to, uh, to the men in the jails and, 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 I, and I started, I was thinking about Moses. And uh, what I was thinking about was my, my beloved pastor. You know, and I started thinking about how Moses had to put up with so much with these people. How God had put this burden on Moses and, and how rough it had to be for him throughout those years to walk through the wilderness and hear the complaining and the murmuring and, and, and just the backbiting and the division in the house of God. And I don't say the house, in, in, the, in the people of God. You know, it came to a point where they wanted their independence, so they created this calf, and they began to worship this idol, and God was tired of it. He got sick, and he just said, that's enough, enough is enough, and, 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 he, and he opened up the earth, and maybe we need the earth open up today, but God is good, and, and, and he took a lot of his, you know, he took a lot of the people with him, and, and Moses still had to go through all the murmuring, he still had to, uh, you know, and then at the end, when he lost his cool for a moment, man, he couldn't even go into the promise yet. So, you know, it was it was such a shame for him. But I'm, I know he's playing golf in heaven somewhere, but either way, you know, it, it, it had to be tough. <laughs> yeah, got him. Praise the Lord. Anyway, it, it had to be tough. And, and, and I realized that, you know, after Moses passed, and he, he told Joshua, you know, be, be of good courage, don't be afraid. You know, I want to be with you wherever you go. And, and, and I, I, there was something in the, in the Bible that, that really puzzled me about Joshua. And the Bible says that, that, that they, wanted to, they wanted to stone Joshua and Caleb. And for a while, they didn't understand that. But now I'm realizing how worldly the church has become and how much somebody like uh, God's anointed is going to speak against the body of Christ. And how much they're going to, uh, they're going to, uh, uh, what's the word I want to use? They're going to despise that. Yeah. You understand? Because the Bible says that they're going to look for itch. They're going to have itch ears. And they want to hear what they want to hear. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where we are today. And the Bible says that, that, that because the, the, the sin abounds, that love of many is going to grow cold. And I don't know how many of you are getting ready for all that. But those things are starting to happen today. The world is becoming very lawless. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know what my pastor said to, to give my testimony, but maybe that's part of it. Um, you know, I, and, and I thought about Joshua and, and, and how he, he had to confront God's people. And he must have felt like I feel now, but, you know, whatever, whatever. You know, we've taken so lightly the gospel of Jesus Christ that the world is mocking us. The world laughs at us. But, you know, there are some of us who are on fire for Jesus. We love Christ because he found us in a place like that, 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 that prostitute who fell at his feet crying because she was filled with sin. She was filled with wickedness. And she knew that she was shamed. And even the, the high priest and, the, and, the, and the, the, the rabbis looked at Jesus and said, if this man is a prophet, he would know what kind of woman's touching him. She's filthy and wicked. And I said, wow, that's church on the streets, baby. That's what I said. You know what I'm saying? But it's only good if you walk in the spirit. You know? And I talk, we talked about the men in the jails, how you know they come to jail and they need Jesus. Maybe everybody should go to jail. That's what I say. I always said that everybody should spend 30 days in jail. I bet it'll humble you. I bet you won't be so cocky and arrogant. But you know, uh, and I told her, yeah, you come to jail and you, look, you find Jesus. Of course, man. I, I love God. I love Jesus. Oh, help me with the judge. Help me get favor. Get me out of here. I don't want to be in this place. I don't want to be stuck in this orange jumpsuit. You know? And they hit a wall. And the good thing about talking to them is that their conscience is woke. Not like some of us here sleeping. They're woke. They're realizing that they're in trouble. They're realizing that, hey man, I gotta go before the judge and I did something wrong and I'm gonna be held accountable for it. You know? And they're listening intently. They listen to every word I say and, I, and I'm blessed by it. Because my, my words are not they, what, my words are not wasted on deaf ears. You understand? Because they're realizing, man, I, 
that something's got to work for me because I'm going somewhere and I don't want to go there. Now, if many of us knew what hell was and, and how, hell, how real hell was, we'd have a fear for God. We'd come in this church with a reverence. This place would be full of people praying and worshiping God. You understand? That's not where we're at anymore. You know? We're lazy. We're slothful. And I'm not putting anybody down, man. But this is what God told me to do. And I didn't want to come up here. I don't want to sing a song. I did it at the, at the jail. You know, they're happy to see anybody. Oh, man, I love you. I love you. Come on again, man. You people, man. Oh, God. Yeah, there he is. There he is again. There's that one again. And there's that one. And whatever the case may be, you know. And I, I shared that with him. And then I began to share that, you know, I've drove truck for years. And, and I've probably shared this before. I mean, this is the first time I ever really gave, had time to give my testimony. And I thank my beloved pastor. You know, that's one of the best blessings of going to the jail, is that I get to sit next to him. Out of all people, my God has put that together. He anointed that. And I'm blessed. And I'm so blessed. And so, that so much to me. And he asked me what I thought about Mother Louise, and I said, you know, I never had a mother who loved me the way she does. And I'm not going to flatter anybody, because flattery is deceit. You understand? But if it weren't for these people, I wouldn't have a healthy upbringing. upbringing. There wouldn't be some good things going on in my life. And it's because these people stood. They stood and they were faithful. And, uh, and, they, you know, and I talked about how she became mother. How she instilled things in me that a mother needs to instill in her children. How I will understand how to, how to look for a wife or how to, how to treat people, how to treat a woman. Whatever it is. But I needed these people to be my parents, and God knew that. And he put them, he, 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 they, they're accountable. So I don't play a song very good that he plays them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You understand? No, no. But, you know, and I told him that I drove truck for years, and then I, it, it became like, like, driving truck became rough, it became hard for me. Because driving truck is a very selfish job. I didn't, my kids are grown. I, I, I don't want a dog. So it's just me. I rolled the country, made money. When I wanted to eat, I stopped. When I wanted to sleep, I could lay down and sleep. I didn't have to worry about anybody. But inside of my heart, I knew that God brought me out of a darkness. I knew that he fixed my life, that he saved me, and that I had to tell somebody. So that was burning inside of me. And I said, well, I mean, I, got, I make 100000 a year. And he said, yeah, but you ain't going to do that no more because you're going to get out of the truck. I said, all right, well, I'll try it. So I got out of the truck and I got a job where I live. Oh, my God, Lord, your plans don't work. I'll need the plan for us. Right, Lord. You understand? And I never realized how difficult it is to work with people. I never realized the struggles that you have to have inside to look at somebody that you know you just want to reach over and sock in the nose and say, God loves you. Jesus loves you. You understand? And walk away with peace in your heart. Now that was my challenge. Now I had a lady who hated me for some reason. This is, I, I, I was a porter. You understand? God put me in the lowest, lowest uh, title that, that they had. You understand? It was Porter. I had to pick up dog poop, man. A uh, big, a uh, big uh, me uh, making a hundred thousand a year. I had to pick up dog poop, man. You understand how humbling that was? It was very humbling. But I said, okay, God, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what you're doing in my life, but this plan is yours, and uh, uh, it's gonna work. You understand? And I went through there, and I cleaned up the buildings, and I did everything as I was doing. As my pastor says, do it as unto the Lord. Man, I was washing windows. I, I, I did things that these people did. Well, I didn't know you. I didn't know people were supposed to wash them windows. And I'm up there washing windows singing praises to God. Because I, because I sure didn't want to be there. You understand? I, I, I didn't want that. I said, God, can't you do something else? Ain't there something else I can do? Maybe I can go help blind people, kids, or families, or what's it, minister to the, the, the kids. No. He said, this is where I want you to start. And it was tough, man. I had to pick up the trash in the parking lot. And it seemed like there was bags of trash. It seemed like people just stopped to say, hey, Robert's picking up trash. Just throw it in the, throw it in the parking lot. <laughs> like God told everybody, give them an email. Throw your trash out in the parking lot today. 
no joke, man. I'm thinking, wow, man. I've never seen so much garbage in my life. You understand? And I, and I said this last time. When you, you know, you see a Corvette, you, and then you think about a Corvette. It's all day you see them. Well, well, I saw a dog poop. That's all I saw all day, man. God, man. God help me, deliver me from these ideas. But it was tough because, you know, we have pride and we have every other thing going on inside of us that we don't realize. We don't realize how messed up we are still. Even being in church for 12 years, 15 years, you, 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 you go to the mirror and you say, oh, I'm good looking, I praise the Lord, I, I, pray, I pay my tithes, I pay my, my, you know, I do it all right, like the man said. I, 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 I'm not like these people. But then you're challenged to love somebody that you don't want to love and you say, I'm not doing that. No good for me. Get me back in the truck, man. I, 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 this is too much. And God is saying, you want to follow me, you got to follow me. You got to die to yourself. You got to let it all go. And he ain't playing. I don't know where the people come. We need that, that, that now, nah, anyway, I'm not going to leave that one on. And so, you know, I had a lady deliberately throwing her garbage. She must have went to the garbage can, pulled out trash, put it in her car, then went to her parking spot and threw it out. And she looked at me and said, I'm going to do it every time, every day. And I said, lady, I hate you. I'm going to glue your, your doors together. You ain't going to get in the truck. You ain't going to get in it. I mean, I want to flatter tires. This is me, a Christian, serving Christ, worshiping God. But inside, there's a resentment, an anger, and a hate, uncontrolled. And God is saying, you got to deal with that. And she really, yeah, I'll deal with it. I told you I'll flatter tires. And she kept doing it, deliberately. And this wasn't her doing it. This was God doing it. This was God. And I told them about going to the Dream Center. I love the Dream Center. Man, that place saved me. That didn't save me. But it, 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 it helped me. You know, I had a lot of issues, man. I had a lot of anger. I would scrap anybody. And I'm, not, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say that, but that's fine. That's my testimony. Okay? And I went to that program and I loved it. I love Pastor Fred, man. We'd go over there and work out and get under the workouts. And you know, even before Jack came, I went over there in 2008 with Pastor Pat. He was a mess. Oh my God, I stayed far away from him. <laughs> and even now, I talk to him all the time. He's a good pastor. I love you, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, and uh, I went to the program and, and it was it was godly. It was it was productive. It was it was positive. You understand? And I learned a lot of things about serving God. I learned about prayer. I learned about being faithful. I learned about being strong and having a backbone. I learned that. And it was good for me. And then I had to go out. <laughs> Can I go back? Yeah, oh. And I, I struggled. I struggled. I made some bad decisions. But then we come to today. Now I look at this place that I live in, it's like the dream center of the world. You understand? And uh, God is so faithful that he's constantly teaching us. Continuously. And if you're not paying attention, then, you know, he calls you the five foolish virgins. You ain't going to have that light when the darkness comes. And, the, and the, when the curtains come down, you're going to be scrambling. Not me. I'm paying attention now. Because I know how real this is. I knew how real it was when he found me in that alley. When I destroyed everything in my life, broke my children's hearts. When all I had was a backpack and I smelled like death. When the flies went to the other garbage can because I smelled so bad. Yeah, that's how it was. But God, but God, but God, you understand? Hallelujah. So now I'm in this, uh, uh, God takes me from glory to glory, from faith to faith. He takes me into this new job. And I'm thinking, all right, this ain't worth it, Lord. I, I don't know where you're getting the idea, but God, God, he says. God, get me out of this thing. He said, you can pray your way out of everything. I'm praying, but I, I'm still stuck there. You understand? And it, it, to, to some of you, it might be uh, just, it might be silly, but it isn't. Because this is God's doing it. This is God doing his work. And everybody's at a different level. And if, if God ain't chastising you, then you ain't one of his. I'm one of his. 
I'm a child of the most high God. I'm a son of the king. Jesus Christ lives inside of my heart. And he's doing something to mature me, to grow me up, so that I can have a responsibility and walk worthy of the call. So I'm in this place, I'm a, it's a compound, the girl said. I work with one of the girls who said, this is a compound, man. I live here, I work here. It was no different than the Dream Center. But it's the World Dream Center. People getting high, smoking dope, everybody's cursing, foul language, doing things they ain't supposed to be doing. And I'm over here judging them. Oh, you're going to go to hell. You're going to go to hell. Oh, you're smoking weed, huh? You're going to hell. Oh, you're throwing out trash. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. These people are looking at me. Well, who are you to tell, tell us? Who are you to be judging? Who are you? Who do you think you are? Exactly. Who do I think I am, God? Forgive me. Forgive me. You didn't call me to be judged. You called me to be a light in the world. Salt. These people are going to hell and I'm judging them. I'm pointing my fingers at them. Like those people with signs, queers going to hell. So what? That ain't, that ain't for us to say. I'm in a place in my life where I can take a queer and hold him in my arms and, and say Jesus Christ loves you and not be uh, insecure because I know who I am. And maybe he needs that. I see there's a couple of them over there. They look like women. I say, God, is that a woman or is that a man? Yeah. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray for that person in Jesus' name. You understand? But I showed him kindness and he became my friend. Because he needed a friend. Because they're, they're oddballs like you and I. And I'm not talking about homosexuality. I'm talking about sin. These people are going to hell and I'm judging them. But maybe I'm going to hell with them because of who, who, who I'm supposed to be and I'm not being. And I'm thinking of this lady, God, oh, oh God, can't you smite her? Oh, let me go Old Testament on this woman. And they killed women and children too, God. He said, no, no, you're going to learn to love her. And she picked, she put trash down, and I went there and picked it up, bitter and angry, frustrated. And God said, start praising me. I said, all right, because that's the only way I'm going to get through this. I said, God, I praise you, I thank you. I thank you for this trash. I thank you for this, this job. I thank you for my life. I thank you for where you found me. I thank you for having mercy on this filthy man. Thank you, Lord. And then he said one other thing that I really said, oh, God. he said, start praying for her. I said, Lord, smite her. <laughs> Give her two left feet. Let her wake up and twist. Uh, okay. How'd that happen? I said, Lord, forgive her. Whatever she's doing to me, Lord, it's so minor. It's so petty. Some of us are so petty, so caught up in the worldly ways that we can't serve Christ. We're so far from God, our light ain't even lit. I can't see that. I got my glasses on. So there's nothing. I can't see anybody. <laughs> What's the word? You know, you know, I began to pray for her. I said, God, help this lady. Touch her life. Save her, God. Something's wrong with her. She said, I'm serious. Something's got to be wrong with her. Really? You know, something's wrong with a lot of us. They need Jesus. She needed Jesus. I said, God, forgive her. She was a homosexual lady. She was rough. I'm from Chicago, man. She had tattoos and big teardrops. I thought the lady would kill me. I said, Just throw the trash, lady. I'll pick it up. <laughs> That's fine. You understand? So hard. She was so hardened with sin and wickedness. And God said, minister to her. She may not make it somewhere. I said, all right, Lord, help her. Forgive her. Help me. Forgive me. Help me to love her. And, you know, it began to get easy. I'm seeing praises, picking up trash. Yeah, it's cool. Then there's more trash. All right, cool, cool. Well, there's some poop over there. Yeah. I'm good, man. I'm growing up. I'm maturing, and, 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 and I, I didn't even realize it. I'm just being obedient because I'm listening to the Holy Spirit because I know that I'm in prayer. I know that I'm seeking God. I know that I'm, I'm drawing nigh to the Lord. I know that I'm seeking His kingdom and His righteousness. I know that this isn't a game for me because I shouldn't be here. I should be dead or laying somewhere uh, twisted out of my mind talking to myself. I should be in a prison cell never getting out because of who I was. But God, 
I got other plans for you. I'm going to take you out of that mess and I'm going to put you somewhere where you can shine bright and be something. Purpose. I said, thank you, Lord. But yeah, but the Bible says humility before honor. So here I am, humbled. And I still want to glue her tie her daughter. To her. But she, she finally moved out. And, and I'm, I'm only using this as a small example of the whole picture. You imagine all these people that Moses had to deal with. Wicked, filthy, bad manners and everything else. And they didn't want to change. They were conformed. And no matter what, God couldn't reach their hardened hearts. You understand? You're so blessed to be here. You're so fortunate. Don't take it lightly. Hallelujah. And so the lady moved out and cussed everybody out, flipped me off, and left me 20 bags of garbage on that patio. And guess who they told to go pick it up? Hey, Robert, we got something for you to do. Oh, really? <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. Let's do this. I just want to shine for Jesus. Yeah, you got to go pick up that garbage. <laughs> okay. And then they said who it was. I said, All right. Cool. I went and picked up that trash and worshiped God. Amen. I said, Lord, thank you for working in my life. Because without love, we're nothing. Amen. We can't do nothing. It's all a bunch of phonies, a bunch of flakes, talking a bunch of Christian. They hate us for that. You know what? I don't want to be hated for being a hypocrite. I don't want to be hated for being phony. I don't want to be hated for judging people, preaching a gospel that I can't live. I want to be hated for walking in Christ. Amen. Yeah, yeah, we've got Why are you going to sit there? <laughs> Why do I have to sit there? Uh, I, I mean, do I have to sing, though? <laughs> yeah. 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 He's got to practice when he preaches. Well, yeah. <laughs> 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 We're all just rolling. It's great for knowledge. Yeah. What do you think about that? You know, like we said, this is, they said it to me, my grace is sufficient unto thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Yes, now, it's got to be something that God puts in your heart. And I mean this. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glorify my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, reproaches, necessities, persecution, distress for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am Okay. Amen. And I kind of like what he was talking about. You know, in Matthew 7, 22, it says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. That's what he's talking about, phony people, right? No one can serve two masters. Matthew 6, 24. Either you love one or hate the other, or else you'll hold to one, be loyal to one, and despise the other. You can't serve God and man. Revelation 3, 15. That's one of my favorites. I know thy works. Thou art neither cold or hot. I wish thou were cold or hot, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold or hot, and I spew you out of my mouth. And see, the whole, the whole thing is simply simply just letting God have his way. Amen? Amen. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 2, 6 it says, And I, brother, when I came to you, did not come with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testament of God. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about his heart. How many can really understand? He's talking about his heart. Yeah. Yeah. Now, he, he had a terrible background. He didn't share that with you, so maybe he didn't want to, so I'm not going to say it. But man, where he's at now, and how God has been able to change him, is unbelievable. Now, God wants to do the same thing for you. But he, to me, the best preaching is example. Doers, not sayers. Amen. To me, if, you, if somebody does it, you can, how can you say, 
anything bad about it. I mean, you can say anything you want bad about it, but how can you refute that? This is the way it is. This is what I'm doing. That's what he's saying. Right? And he's doing it. He's living it. You know what's funny? He was in a truck. He was avoiding people. Making all that money. Now, he's, he's working in an apartment with all these people. He went in. He finally hit him a bad time. Next thing you know, he was going to be honest, she saw the way he did it. She said, will you pray for me, with me? And he's been in praying. She's lady boss with his boss. He's working his way up in the company. Man, he's painting and doing lots of maintenance. He's still picking up doo-doo? He's not picking up doo-doo. <laughs> no, actually, I am. I actually am. Anyway, but anyway, just think about it. Okay. And I, brother, when I came to you, did not come with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you since Jesus Christ and the presumption of Amen. How many is there? For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him presumption <coughs> Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in the name, in the name have they cast out devils, in the name have many wonderful works? Then I said to him, to them, I, I never knew you depart from me. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and to with you. Weakness and fear and much trembling, and my speech and my preaching was not within persuasive words of men's wisdom, but the demonstration of the spirit and power, that your faith did not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. <coughs> Can you let simply, just simply let God be God? Amen. Because He knows how to do this. And I'm telling you what, most exciting thing, I say this all the time, I don't know if you believe it or not. There's such a peace. When you let God be God, He gets a holy, He puts a fire in your bones. And that, that's what Paul was saying. Count it out joy when you fall in them. Diverse, yeah, temptation. See, what he's, what he's talking about is, for by grace we're saved through faith and not of ourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works. It's in another book. It's just letting like God be God. Amen? Amen? And when we do that, man, we start to flourish and grow and because you're a completely different person. You got a new heart, you got a new mind. You got everything's new. And that's how I can see that in him, and I can see it in many of us. Good preacher, isn't he? Yeah. Well, yeah. He is. You know, God's gifted him. And he's, I've, I've known that for years. I've been trying to get him free for years. <laughs> but it, it takes time. See, that's another thing I'm going to shut up. That's another thing. You just go to let God. <laughs> this, 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 this is all ready to go. That's right. I know. We'll try to do. See, the whole idea <laughs> is just is let God be God. Let him be God. You understand what I'm saying? Blow all the smoke you want. Go ahead and go to hell. Oh, what about yourself? You gotta serve somebody. And you gotta choose. And if you don't choose, you've already chosen, don't know it. The people that know their God are gonna be saved. Amen. Miss yourself there for God. Listen to them, he'll flee. You can't play around. But the thing God wants and he loves us because he wants to save us. He wants to work in us. He wants to use us. He wants us to prosper. It is fun. Is that fun? Through the battles? It's not fun? <laughs> Come here, sir. Is that it? Is this going on? Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to sit down and say, Can we just play the tape? <laughs> play the song over there. Yeah, actually, hallelujah. Yeah, I still pick up poop out of, out of gratitude to, to the Lord for what he's been doing. I do. I make, make a point. And I carry doggy treats on my little car. <laughs> a, lot of the, a lot of the people appreciate that. You know, which, the dogs, <laughs> like, yeah, yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they do. It, it's, it's, but, yeah. Um, I was going to play it. Uh, Jesus, lover my soul in the jail today. I didn't play it. I played this one. And this is not a, a Christian song. It's 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 called uh, uh, "Don't Let the Old Man In" by Toby Keith. And I know he just passed away. And I played it today at the jail, and my pastor said go ahead and play it. So I, I felt awkward because it's not a Christian song, but uh, 
Well, he's the boss, so well, she's the boss. <laughs> you better move him. Praise the Lord. <laughs> good. Okay, I'm going to try this, and uh, if, if, if it don't sound good, it's because Remington didn't let me practice to this. <laughs>
And if that's what God's called me to do, what's He called you to do? But you got you can't let the old man, the devil, rule and reign in your life. You you got to let God be God. And it's just a matter of submitting to Him. Now I believe I believe there's a lot more of you back there that really love the Lord. You want to you want you want to do what He wants you to do, but you just this will take a little while. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just feel peace in this place. This is your deal, God, because I know I've battled this just like I did last month when I, I preached. I battled it to the last minute. And it was all about making a decision. And I might be battling that and had to wait to the very, very end. I made the decision. And I believe that's what you, you had me to do. And I believe many people here tonight are battling. Just like Robert was battling and still is battling. This might have been maybe the hardest thing he's ever had to do in his life. But he did it. He had something else to do. As I was talking to him in jail. Whatever it was, he says, I'll counsel what I have to do. And I'll come tonight. And he did it. And this is just between us and God, my friend. Nobody's trying to jam anything in. So let's just face the truth. The truth is Jesus loves us. He's knocking the door of our heart. If we don't open the door, he can't come in. And open the door means let him have control. Does that make a sense? Just pray with me. Say, dear God, I thank you. That you're showing me what it is you want me to do. And I believe, if I know it's you, you'll help me get to it. The grow in you. Become what you want me to be. And let the glory of God get a hold of my life and guide me and then God I pray that you use me to minister to other people have your way if I know it's you I'll do it show me in Jesus name Amen